Let's close our eyes and let's invite our Heavenly Father to be with us tonight. Our gracious Father in Heaven, again it's Wednesday night, prayer meeting, and we have decided to set aside this time to be found in your presence, to sit at your feet, to listen to your words. Please, we are asking that you will speak to us and then that you will give us the obedience, give us the ability not only to hear your words, but to apply your words, to put it into practice. Please, gracious Father, we know that you give us the words of truth and that your words will guide us in paths that will lead us to green pastures and still waters. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for making it possible that we can speak with the Father and that we can speak to him face to face. Our gracious Father, we also ask that you'll please give us your spirit so that your spirit will guide us tonight, that what we learn we will take courage in and that we'll use these words as we journey in this world that we are in now. So bless us, Father. I do ask that each person that is watching and those that will watch later, that you will bless them. And Father, the request for prayer, and there are so many of them, that you will please, Father, consider them. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, dear friends, what I want you to do is to go with me to the Word of God, to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now, those of you who know Deuteronomy and some of the chapters there, you'll know that Deuteronomy is where we find, in actual fact, the Ten Commandments given to us. And just prior to that, and in actual fact, in two places, in Numbers also, but I'm choosing Deuteronomy chapter 5, sorry, chapter 4, and I want to read to you a very interesting comment made there or information that is given to us. It says there in Deuteronomy chapter 4, and I'm looking at verse 41. So Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 41. Then Moses set aside three cities east of the Jordan. It's interesting that in the book of Numbers, in, in actual fact, six cities were set aside. But that's not um, a, a crucial aspect. I want you to understand that six cities were set aside. And what were they set aside for? Verse 42, to which anyone who killed a person could flee. Now, I guess if we just had to stop there, it would really sound like uh, one could get away with murder. But that is not what the, what the verse allows us. It says there, to which anyone could, uh, who had killed a person could flee if they had unintentionally killed a neighbor without malice of, for, uh, malice of forethought, they could flee into one of these cities and save their lives. Now, dear friends, isn't it amazing that in God's word, God saw fit to set aside cities. Now, it's very interesting, dear friends, that these cities... Uh, were situated in such a way throughout um, the city of or the, the area of Palestine that any person could find or would be found within a half a, half an, half a day's journey from any of these cities of refuge. So no matter where you found yourself in the promised land that had been given to the Jewish nation, if you found that something happened, such as what we just read there, that you took a life un unintentionally, then you could flee to one of these six cities found throughout Palestine. Now, as I indicated to you, these cities were half a day's journey in any direction of any place found within Palestine, a half a day's journey. It's also interesting that if you go into the Word of God, you will find out that these roads that were leading to 
these cities were always kept, kept in good repair. That means they were really set up like our freeways, making sure that there are no potholes, that there, are, there is nothing that will actually um, hinder your journey to the city. Also, something that is so interesting, along this journey, there would be signposts erected. Imagine this, dear friends. Signposts erected bearing the word refuge in plain, bold characters. Plain, bold letters. So I want you just for a moment to look at this because we are going to look at this. And it says, choose a city to flee to. That's our subject for tonight. And dear friends, when we find ourselves in this world, there's a lot of people that say we are to flee from the cities. And I don't want to get involved in that. In actual fact, I'm encouraging you tonight to choose a city to flee to. You see, you're going to need to flee to a city. The interesting thing is I'm going to be discussing this as we go on, that it is important, dear friends, that we flee to a city. Now, another interesting thing is that these cities weren't only available for a particular person of faith. For example, a Hebrew or any particular nationality. Any person who felt threatened. It could be a stranger. It could be a pilgrim traveling through. That if something happened that he took a life unintentionally, he could flee to any of these cities that were clearly signposted. I also want you to notice that all of these things, the, the roadways being made level, the, the signposts clearly displayed along, the fact that it was a half a day's journey in either direction, that you could find a place like this, was very important so that the person who, who needed this place of refuge could get to this place without delay in a single moment. Because you know, dear friends, sometimes something tragic or something uneventful happens to you when you least expect it. And it, it was so important that you could, in those moments, flee away. It's interesting that the purpose of these cities of refuge was so that when you fled to these cities, there would be people there who would be totally um, unbiased. They wouldn't have any um, or, or choosings of a side. So that, let's say a family member was pursuing you because you had killed one of their loved ones and they took you to task before you could even have a fair trial. Um, that would have been terrible. And I guess the old saying, an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth would just happen without proper um, inspection or um, checking out to see what really took place. And then I want to go a little bit further. It's interesting that in these cities of refuge, there would be people who would be responsible. And the first thing that they would do is to determine if this person um, did intentionally or unintentionally murder a particular person. So these authorities in these cities of refuge, that would be their main responsibility. And if this person was found that they had taken a life unintentionally, they were given refuge in that city and nobody could touch them. They could be, they could be totally safe. And it was interesting too, dear friends, that if, however, the authorities found out that you were guilty, that you had intentionally murdered a person, then you would be handed over to the avenger, the person wanting your life. It's also interesting that the high priest, in the event of his death, that the people who found themselves in these cities of refuge, while the high priest was alive, they could remain in these cities and have the protection granted to them. But should the high priest die, it is incredible to realize that at that moment, any person who had sought shelter in these cities 
could then return home, could have the liberty of returning back to their possessions. Now, this is so amazing that God decided to put these cities within reach so that any person could have access to them. And I want you to bear in mind, dear friends, as I talk, that I want you to recognize you need to choose a city that is close by to you. A city within half a day's journey. <laughs> now, if you happen to have a, a jet, maybe half a day's journey could get you ended up in Europe or in America or in Australia. But none of us have that luxury. If you had a car, I guess a half a day's journey could take you, I guess, about 800 kilometers. So, you know, that is what it'd be. But in those times, a half a day's journey was particularly how far you could walk or ride on a, a donkey, perhaps. So to me, it's interesting that there was these cities available within access to every person. And I want you to understand, dear friends, I'm emphasizing this because I want you to notice that God has given you this opportunity to flee to a city that will... Um, give you a fair trial. You know, we are living in a world, dear friends, where it doesn't seem that fairness is the measuring tool out there. In actual fact, God's word counsels me that the scales that mankind uses to basically decide the destinies of mankind have actually been manipulated. The, the weights are imbalanced. And as a result, a lot of um, unfair justice has been handed out. But I want you to realize that we need, or that God has provided to that person a journey. I wonder how many of you have found yourself in a situation where nobody believes you, where it seems that you perhaps intentionally killed the person. Let's use Moses as an example. He's trying to protect um, a slave from a slave driver and unintentionally kills him. And yet the, the he would be looked upon as a murderer. So we all need, some of us, and I don't want to use just taking a life as an example. So this is only applicable to the case when a person took a life. But I want you to imagine, dear friends, how many times aren't you accused in some way of something, perhaps um, disregarding a particular law? For example, not honoring your father or your mother, or perhaps um, other questions such as, uh, did you steal something and you didn't do it and yet everybody stands up against you and, and you find that the courts determine that you were guilty. I want you to understand that God has provided a city of refuge, but I want you to recognize something that I put a word here that's very important. That is the word choose. Dear friends, you need to choose a city. It makes me think of that scripture where God or David actually writes that he would rather be found in the hands of God when it comes to justice than in the hands of mankind. And I wonder what you will do. Would you choose for somebody on planet Earth to consider your destiny as to what the verdict should be? Or will you choose Jesus Christ, the one who can read your heart and truly understands the intentions of your heart. I always think of the words of David again where he says, Lord, search my heart. I think of the words of Peter where Jesus is talking to him and says to him, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. Then Jesus says, well, you know, feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And then Jesus says, feed my lambs. And then he says, Peter, do you love me? Now, it's almost like people were questioning because of his behavior, if he truly loved Jesus. But finally, he said these words. Peter said these words. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And dear friends, I want you to know that I want you to choose a refuge that is fair and unbiased. One who has walked in your shoes 
and knows exactly the temptations that comes to you and knows that there is a foe, one who's intent on tripping us up, one who's, whose intent is to take away from us the gift of life that Christ has offered. And so, dear friends, I want you to choose tonight a city to flee to. And God has given us one. I also want you to notice that the, the importance of this is that I want you to be aware that there is a city of refuge that you can flee to. But dear friends, it's strange. The only time you will feel the need of that city is when you are in trouble. Now, I'm wondering how many of you watching tonight find yourself in a place where you know that you've broken the laws of God and that you feel terrible and you, you feel frustrated because you know that that was not the intent of your heart. I think of the words of Paul where he says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Because he says, while I choose to do good, I find that I've defaulted towards evil. And you feel angry about it. It's almost as if you are out of control. Now, I want you to recognize, dear friends, that you can choose a refuge. You can find yourself a place where you can go and have the loving arms of somebody who truly understands you, wrapped around you, and being able to listen to you without bias. And that they will listen to you with ears of mercy. That they will listen to you with the understanding that they can read the genuineness of your heart. Who do you know? What city do you know? That is a city like that, where there will be no tears, where there will be no death, where there will be no pain. What city do you know like that? Now, I want you to be aware that when you find yourself in this situation, difference, and I want you to listen to this, this statement is taken out of From Eternity Past on page 369, paragraph 2. It says, he who fled to the city of refuge could make no delay. So, dear friends, don't waste time. It says there, there was no time to say farewell to loved ones. Weariness was forgotten. Difficulties were unheeded. The fugitive dared not slacken his pace until he was within the city. Now, can you imagine that, dear friends, that tonight I'm saying to you that if you need a city of refuge, if you realize that you need that now, my counsel to you is do not delay. Don't even take time to say bye-bye to loved ones. Let weariness be forgotten. Let difficulties Difficulties be unheeded. Don't slacken your pace, but with fervent pace, with extended pace, take your journey to the city of refuge. Now, I want you to notice that we have recorded in God's word two cities. And the first city, in actual fact, is the city that if we should come out of any city, it is the city that definitely um, brings us pain. Dear friends, in that city is none other than the city of Babylon. It's so interesting that this city has become, as the word of God says in Revelation chapter 18, verse 2, it has become a dwelling place for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. It's so interesting that the people that are found there are reckless when it comes to the lives of others. 
they are inconsiderate they are unloving they are impatient they have no mercy the people who are found in the city of Babylon and dear friends my counsel to you as the word of God says there in verse 4 come out of her my people so that you will not share in her sins so that you will not receive any of her plagues I want to advise you that our Heavenly Father is definitely go, definitely going to go up against the city of Babylon and my counsel to you is flee that city. But then I want you to listen to me. And I want you to flee to a city that God has gone to prepare for us. In John chapter 14, Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If that was not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back to fetch you to be with me where I am. And where is that place, dear friends? That place is in the city of God, the city of Zion. That place is the new Jerusalem. Now I want you to understand that that place is the city that you should find your dwelling place in. It's so interesting that in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 2, we read these words. Many people will come and say, this is in verse 3, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. Dear friends, I, you have to choose today a city. And I don't want you to be comfortable in Babylon. It's so interesting where the, when the people of Israel who had been taken captive to Babylon were given the the decree to go back home, back to the city of Jerusalem. A lot of them had found themselves comfortable in Babylon and did not wish to return. They had no desire for the city of God, for the city of refuge. Somehow the sins of the world had become, uh, they'd become blind to them. And dear friends, there's a lot of us who find comfort in this world. But I'm praying that as you see the misery and unhappiness and ugliness of life, that you will have this desire to get out of Babylon and to find the city of God. I want you to look at something with me. It says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Now I want you to listen to the next words. It says, verse 2, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for a husband. Isn't that incredible? That's the city that we are to flee to, dear friends. And the most interesting thing is if you go and look at the city and you go and discover its foundations and you go and see its measurements and you go and see its gates and you go and study its cities and you see the river that comes flowing out from the throne of God whose, temp whose dwelling place is there and you see the tree of life growing on both sides of the river. It is a good city, dear friends, a good city to find a refuge in. Do you have a longing to be found in the city of God? It's so interesting, dear friends, that the cities of refuge that we are told about in the Word of God were places where the gates of the city would be closed against the enemies that would come to try and harm the people in the city. But I'm counseled very clearly that this, the gates of the new Jerusalem will never be closed. That means there will be no, nothing that will be able to harm you anymore. 
But tonight, dear friends, I'm asking you to choose a city to flee to. Please, dear friends, if you find yourself in a world that you kind of like and feel comfortable with and don't have a longing for the return of Christ, I, I'm, I'm going to pray that the Lord will make things a little harder so that in the end you will have a longing for this city so that you in the end will choose the Jerusalem, the city of God, to be the city that you flee to.